previously on Coming Out of the Cosmic Closet. We took a little break. We did. Because you lost your dear papa. Yes, yes. Yeah, we're so sorry to hear that. Yeah, pretty big event yeah. in, uh, in anybody's life. Yeah. Like my dad was an Australian man. He literally never told me that he loved me until mm. on his de- deathbed. It oh was like gosh. the last thing he said to me. Wow. My stepmother selected a, like a wicker um a wicker uh, coffin, huh. which biodegrades. Yeah. So he, 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 he was buried like a bottle of Chianti. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he loved his football team, Richmond, so he had his, the Richmond scarf. And but, but going through the process, I made a movie of all the pictures and going through the pictures. There's just something very powerful about that, the sacredness of ceremony. Everyone has a special gift. Mine, the circle of light. They speak through me and they're here to assist the planet's evolution to a more enlightened space. And for some reason, they chose me, a raunchy comedian, to be their vessel. I used to be secretive about my ability, but now it's time to come out of the cosmic closet and you should too. My name is Georgia Jean and these are my crazy stories. Greetings, all you crazy consciousness searching closet door opening people. (laughs) Welcome back to Coming Out of the Cosmic Closet. And today I have a very, very lovely special guest. I'm down here in Australia meeting up with some people from from, uh, my life. So my lovely usual co-host, Melissa Rotigliano, won't be joining us. But instead, I have a very special person, my Auntie Lynn. (laughs) And I've invited Lynn on the show today because to really look at the when I first came out of the came out had had my event, I was very insecure because I didn't think I had any kind of psychic background or connection. Um, Nobody in my family was really into it. And I would come down on trips to Australia and suddenly be like, hey, now I can channel spirits. And uh, it wasn't until after that event I found out that my Auntie Lynn also had the gift. So (laughs) say hi. (laughs) Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. (laughs) So good to have her. So um, how was that for you when you first started how did your journey begin that for you to discover that you had an ability? Was it? Did you have a spontaneous opening or was it? Uh, no, it, it was gradual really. Mm. Um, there's always a knowing. Mm. And I really got started through yoga. Right. And that was like a huge awakening for me mm. and that started me doing my searching on the spiritual journey. Yes. And uh, I felt so wonderful doing that. Uh, it took a few years uh, and shifting between states, interstate I'm mm-hmm. talking about. Mm-hmm. and uh, Physical states, yeah, not states of consciousness. Yeah. I, I, I <laughs> states <was> of Australia. <laughs> states of Australia. <laughs> and, um, yes, it was I pre- kept practising yoga and meditating. Mm. And, and what what – Year, decade was this that this all started? Because I feel like you are one of the original New Age wave people. This would be about 1970. 19, so that's the year I was born. Oh, there you oh, go. <laughs> wow. Well, damn, I now yeah. revealed my age on the show for the first time. <laughs> um, I find that very interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, yes, and it was just really my my journey into the um, mediumship mm. and, and psychic and Lynn is a very very talented medium and you're really switched on like the yes. the tap is open for you <laughs> with the crust over people much more than me yeah and um i overheard on the radio in the car in those days mm. that there was a spiritualist church mm. And I didn't understand what that was, Mm, mm. but I thought I must go there. Yes. And so the very next Sunday 
I went there and they were so warm and welcoming mm. and um, I felt at home immediately. And I think that that would have been really pretty kooky at that mm. time because yes. an Australia is quite a oh, Catholic yeah. Church of yeah. England. So the spiritualist yeah. churches are pretty yeah. pretty wacky, right, yeah. when someone, someone's <laughs> run after the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where it all happened, yeah. and and um, and I was really um, not torn at that stage. Mm. I just walked into that church, and I loved it, mm. and I just loved everything about it. Mm. The demonstrations of um, receiving the messages, mm. and and the people I loved, because that's what it really was mm. like a sort of just a gathering of people who gathering. were connected to spirit. Mm. Yeah, there were prayers, mm. there were um, songs, mm. and um, and then we had um, demonstrations, mm. and I really loved everything about it, and I've just continued to go there yeah. for quite a while, and then I joined a development circle. Right, That's and that's how the, the ability started yeah. developing. Yeah, and, yes. and I must say I was feeling afraid at yes. that time because I was right. going into something I didn't know. Yes. and um, But I continued even though I felt that feeling, um, you know, and we'd all been told that this is something that you do um, for the good of others and yeah. um, that if you're going to do it, then you need to learn to do it properly. Right, right. And, and that's so, the responsibility aspect of it. That's right. Yes. And yeah. um, so we develop these abilities that are there within us all mm. and, you know, it's just a matter of uh, whether you want to use them or not. Do you remember so. what was your first, because just going back to like my first sort of feelings of insecurity and mm. uh, about can I really do this? Is this really happening? Am I making it up? Um, am I crazy? Um, and also I would go and I would look at websites of other psychics or other, you know, yeah, <laughs> people with the skills mm -hmm. and it would all be like, you know, you know, Angel Girl is a fifth generation psychic from, and I was just like, I don't have five generations of psychic <laughs> powers behind me, and I'm just a, uh, you know, um, I'm just a person who is a person, and how can I ever match up to yeah. these people who have it in the bloodline and yeah. all that sort of stuff? But then I came to find out that I am a yes, <laughs> you definitely are <laughs> fifth generation, like fifth. What my great 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 grandmother, your great great grandmother was a medium, yes. And uh, my uh, her son-in-law was mm. a spiritualist. Right. Her own daughter was a staunch Roman Catholic. Right, right. And, um, you know, it really just came down. That, yes. That, that was never really spoken about. It wasn't spoken about because my dad was... Mm. Very, you know, wasn't open to this sort of thing, or mm. and I didn't. It it really was a great, re, great revelation and comfort to me to find out that my yes. auntie was also <laughs> <laughs> a little cosmic kooky, <laughs> oh, yes. and that we I had someone within the family unit at least to share, like be like, hey. Well, they hadn't rejected you outright, so because the fear is that you'll be rejected if you're too weird and stuff like that. If you and if you're, yes. you know, if you're doing this stuff, yes, that's that you, right. That you'll and be rejected by people. Yeah. That was often the case with mediums that stood upon the platform, and they'd say, "Well, people say I'm insane, right? But I'm here and right. I'm doing this work, right? And so the love of work just overcomes all of that's that. right. And what was the first? Do you remember what the first? reading or experience that you had that you're actually like oh my god I really am communicating to someone from the other side or getting something that well, I couldn't possibly know as we were doing readings for each other mm. in development circle mm -hmm. so it, it we had to do that we yeah. had to stand up and do that yeah and give um information or just tell about our own journey mm. within that meditation time mm. and we also had to um try and get to know our guides that yes. were with us yeah. and um, there'd be different um, pictures shown mm. or, you know, or, or just feelings, facial feelings mm. on your own face, um, you know, anything to know that they were there with you yes. and giving you signals that, hello, I'm here, yes, yes, you know. Yeah. And uh, as uh, 
you, you could I could see mm. in my subjectively, not objectively. So in the back of your mind yes, or in the, third, yes, in the inside yes. rather than yeah. walking around. At times I did see objectively. Right. Um, you could watch other sitters' faces as the um, changes took place in their faces. Mm. Um, that, that was happening. Mm. Um, so the confidence grew as those um, things happened. Yes. And uh, and that sort of helps to open the channel yeah. and open it. That's why I always say it's a gent it's a you have to it's, be gentle with the yes. process, not have ridiculous yes. expectations yeah. starting off. Yeah. And let it, it, it was it's very the trust helps to open mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. It was very slow. We started mm. to feel like, oh, um, I can see auras around things mm. after you've been there, you know, mm. or oh my diet is changing. I want to eat differently. Right. Um you know, things like that happened You're as having well. like sort of intuitive shifts mm -hmm. along the way, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, um, yes, it was uh, a lot of training in, right. the, in within that because mm. we knew we had to uh, be disciplined about yeah. how we worked because yeah. we don't want to hear that uh, voice chattering away to us all the time. We, right. we want to be in charge. Right. So um, that we had to learn to do that. Mm. And then we were allowed to do readings. Mm. And we were all shaking. Nervous, right? <laughs> and very yeah. nervous. Yeah. And going in front of the um, church congregation. Mm. And um, and you just had to get over the nervous yeah. part yeah. and allow. And allow. And then it, it started to flow. It started to yeah. flow. And so. that's really why those best readings or those uh, when people come in with that testing vibe or something weird, there's, I mean, unless someone's, got no nervous system mm, <laughs> it's mm. very hard to be in that yeah that open yeah. receptive state and deliver yeah. yeah as soon as someone comes in like that to, yeah if they're having a reading and they cross their legs they cross their arms yeah and say read me yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know get it right um yeah. yes well everything stops everything shuts yeah. down for me when that happens yeah um <clears throat> so to get the sitter to relax and right. you know and then uh things start to happen then you know yeah. so a bit of laughter yeah laughter lightens up the atmosphere right. and it's much easier to receive communication right and that's a real thing that when people have a strong attachment to because if they're grieving or if they're going through a hard time and they really want to hear from someone mm. that that emotional state isn't mm. always the most conducive no. for, the, for the messages to actually come through no. and that's kind of the hard chicken of the egg that's, sometimes, that's right. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. As soon as a little time passes mm. and you can relax again, then mm. then you could be getting these messages, Yeah, you know? yeah. And um, communication. Yeah. yeah. And, um, oh, gosh, something. But, th but it's uh, talking to you now, it's actually blowing my mind that you were doing this because I grew up with you. We didn't see tons of each other, but I no. saw you certainly regularly through, you know, a, you know, a period of time. Mm -hmm. Had no idea that you're off doing this stuff. Well, it wasn't something that I really talked about a lot. Mm. Um, it, uh, it, it, I didn't advertise or mm -hmm. anything like that. Mm. It, uh, with the work that mm. I was doing. Um, it would come through the church or, right. um, you know, but then later on I branched out and I went and worked in some lovely crystal shops yes. and things like that. So I was always pretty busy. Yeah. Um, but within the family it was like I was wearing one hat to do the the right. psychic or, or right. mediumship yeah. and then another hat would go on and it would be Lynn, mum and yes. uh, daughter and, and uh, wife sister and all that, sister and, and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and I didn't discuss it with um, people um, unless they wanted to talk about well, things that, like that. Well, and that's right because it's sort of not mm. w worth activating the resistance half the time mm. if people are mm. sceptical. It's just mm. sceptical. It, 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 <laughs> it is <laughs> hard, you know, because... Yeah. Um, it it's a bit of a blow because yeah. it's something that you love doing, yes. and then it's it's a, like a downer. Yes, <laughs> you know yeah. when you you talk to someone who doesn't believe in any of that, yeah. you know, and and but you, I suppose it's just like anything. You've just got to have confidence in yourself yes. and think, well, that's their opinion. Yeah, yeah, and mm. it is, but there there is that interpersonal thing when mm. I when, know I'm always going on about with the dating, like mm. <laughs> you know. Just I don't tell people mm. um, because, first of all, you, 
we all have a desire to feel accepted yes. as a human being. Yeah. And this is one of those things that for a lot of people can be a deal breaker mm-hmm. in terms of whether they oh, yeah. they will date you, go yeah. out with you, associate yeah. with you, and it's such a shame. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, it's so sad when that happens yeah. if, if somebody doesn't recognise that this is all, uh, you know, it's a gift it's, yeah, and, yeah. and it's really a lovely thing, yeah. you know. but uh, It's sort of like saying if someone's a musician, you can't date them. Yes. <laughs> because, and, and maybe dating a musician <laughs> isn't a great idea <laughs> because the scallywags, but... <laughs> <laughs> but but you wouldn't not but that would be more like not dating them because of the lifestyle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> skip on the sex, drugs, rock and roll. Yeah. But but the fact that you can play an instrument wouldn't be a reason why you wouldn't believe someone mm. or that mm. you would. And that's mm. really the cogn- yeah. cognitive dissonance that's that people right. are like, no, <laughs> what you do is not real. Mm. What you experience mm. is not real or who you are is not real. Yeah. And what were you saying earlier? Just like what do they think that you're doing? Yes, yeah. because um, you, you think, well, it's me mm. and um, and it's very real to me. Mm. So do they think I'm making it up? Yeah. You know, yes. that's the sort of feeling. Yeah. You know? And, and uh, you know, that would um, make um, I would think, oh, well, they they must think um, I'm just, you know, crazy. Have a bit of a craziness yeah, there, yeah. And uh, but you know, it's real. So you just keep going. You just keep going, <laughs> and it is such a beautiful experience. Yeah. And and um, is there a story you can share of like a reading that just was super powerful or super? Well, I. I've got one to tell, mm-hmm. and that is um, with in my own family, mm. my two daughters and I, we were all around the um, kitchen making apple pie, which mm-hmm. was my mother's favourite thing to make. Mm. She made beautiful apple pie. Mm. So I could always feel that she was there mm. when I was making oh, it. And I'd say, no, you'd feel her, now yeah. put this in now, do this now, don't put too much water in. <laughs> so she was like, giving you, she yeah, gives you quick, yeah, the cooking instructions. Yeah, <laughs> I don't do it that way. And um, I was talking with my younger daughter mm. um, and hadn't heard anything about boyfriends, but the older daughter piped up and said, well, have you got a boyfriend? Mm. And she said, no. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, my mother stepped in and said, oh, yes, she has. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, his name begins with R and he's got a beautiful family. He's a Gemini and his sister's name's Catherine. And she wow. was very, very pleased about this um, this meeting of these two. Mm. And my daughter was amazed yes. and said no more yes <laughs> don't tell me anymore yeah and um she yeah. didn't want to know more from that which is so interesting no because no. i'd be like tell me more <laughs> what <laughs> no it was just um it came out so quickly mm. and it, it was for me to know because my daughter had been going out with this gorgeous man mm. for months mm. <laughs> and i mm. knew nothing yes and uh, so my mother told me yeah <laughs> and he ended up having the same birthday. Oh, this, oh, yes. And he ended up, he was a Gemini, like my brother is a Gemini, on the exact same birthday. Exact same birthday. And that is my fourth, father. Yes, yeah, yeah. 4th of June. Yes. And and what a lovely person he is too, you know. Mm. So um, it was just so special. Yeah. I'll never forget it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I felt so thrilled yeah. because I thought this is this is something that's meant to be. So it meant well, that and you mm. would have that specificity of the information mm. and the. Mm. Did you do you get the feelings in your body? Like I, when something feels that what I call right on right yeah. now, I get this physical expansion. Yes. I feel this big expansion. Do yeah. you? What What do you well, feel when you get I, it? Really? I don't feel it like that. I just feel really happy. Yeah, and um, with that with that one, I was feeling really happy, mm. and I was walking on air. Mm, mm, um mm. another incident that happened um was i was meditating one morning and this is not such a happy story mm. but i knew something was going to go wrong my solar plexus was mm. really kicking up mm, you know mm. and um i said oh what's wrong what's wrong and then all of a sudden i was told that 
I was picturing my husband mm. and there was something going mm. wrong. Mm. And so and I had to tell him mm. that day mm. how much I loved him. Mm. And so I did. Mm. And that evening mm. um, my husband he was having he had his little glass of red wine mm. he he went out and he was very naughty went on to the roof mm. uh, clearing gutters because it was misty and raining right, right. and this is what it was all about mm. he fell through the roof wow and he ended up in the hospital with mm. a broken back oh. and i was i had actually when he went out there, I mm. thought, no, he's not to go out there. Mm. And I raced out, but I was too late. Mm. It was right. five minutes, five right. minutes. But you found him. Uh, I did. Yes, yeah. you found him. And, mm. and we had, so I'm here with my auntie because yesterday, um, probably not when you're listening to this, but was the uh, my father's birthday and I've talked about uh, his passing in another episode. And... Um, so I'm here with my auntie and we've been sharing stories about him and it's really wonderful. But uh, during the, when we took, when we did the funeral, we did a, uh, a, a point and it was really hard going, going through the funeral and doing mm. the ceremony and pretty amazing. And I've talked about that, but when we uh, buried him, because he owned a vineyard, we poured bottles of wine into, into the, uh, into the grave. And it was just for me at that moment, that I felt this really huge feeling of jubilation and, and joy and like just this, yes, yeah, just a great feeling of joy. And I was always like, why, why am I suddenly so happy? I just there was a, I just put it down to maybe the relief of the pressure. But without knowing that, you messaged me at one point and yeah. told me that. Yes, I'd been meditating um, after the funeral a few yeah. days later, I think it was, and um, and I said to my brother, "What did you think about that?" Because I knew he was there. Yes, what my did brother, you think about dead dad. that? That 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 um, the funeral and what happened. And he said, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's laughing. Yeah, and so at the time uh, of the pouring of the wine and yeah. everything. Um, he would have been laughing, yes, and yeah. um, you know, and I was really surprised to hear him say this yeah. because, to me, he presented quite serious, and I yeah. thought, oh, he might have wanted something different, you know. Yeah. But he was really happy yes. with what had happened, yes, and I yes. was very relieved. <laughs> I did put his because um, he loved the Richmond Tigers, the football team, yeah. and I did. Um, we buried the scarf, but I did wrap that up so it would be over his face because yes. I didn't want the no, wine, wine going, going on, on his face. <laughs> but, yeah, but really it was to go on the earth. That was cool. Yeah, so I was like, yeah. oh. So nice. it was another lovely experience. Mm. And and what he said to me, he said it was, he said all that matters is love. Mm. He said that. Mm. And, and so it was beautiful. Mm. You know, he said, Oh, he said, I don't know why everybody's being um, so serious. Lighten up. <laughs> Lighten, Lighten up. up right. you know? <laughs> yes. So yes. it's quite surprising yeah. because he, I felt he was serious. Yes. And then that, this mm. is what he said to me straight away. Yeah. Why is everybody being so serious? Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, yeah. that's that real relief when, when someone crosses over the summit. Oh, Often, a lot of the weight has lifted for them that mm. might have made them serious, mm. or yeah. Um, and they're because dad was a very um, he was a cheeky fellow with oh, a yes. lot of humor and stuff yes. like that. But life brings upon challenges yeah. and brings a lot of that seriousness. So, mm -hmm. I'm glad to get a hoot out, yeah. out of that. <laughs> so, Lynn, tell me too, also, because I'm sure a lot of people out there who are listening who maybe are opening up or also know somebody who's opening up because it's happening left, right and centre right now. Um, when you were going through this, you, you know, you lived in the country and, um, and did you experience a lot of pushback um, from people? Um, did you experience a lot of judgment as you were trying to open up or uh, explore this or did you feel? Not, not so much that I can remember that, but it was really my own judgment mm. uh, that I was thinking because mm. um, I grew up going to the Anglican church mm. and I really loved going there, mm. but um, I 
just love being within my own meditative space, yes. not actually listening to what was being (laughs) told to me which is good because we're all told we'll be burnt in hell yes but um if we didn't be good but um but for a lot of people just the first experience of church is the first point of connection to mm -hmm. something other Mm -hmm. or greater regardless of the dogma and that that stuff that that connection point Mm -hmm. was the spirit yeah yeah well i did feel very happy about being there Mm. and um I felt I was being, I don't know, somehow I, I didn't, I felt guilty because mm. I wasn't there. Mm. Um, I was, you know, following this other path mm. and and I did love part of the church and I still do mm, 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 as mm. long as I can, I'm allowed to be peaceful there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, yes. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, I had that. Um, I actually carefully monitored who I would speak to about yes, what right. I was doing right, right, yes. because um, you don't need all that doubting from other people. That's right. And you you have to trust yourself and trust is a huge thing to learn about yeah, doing this work it because is. You, if you trust and give to others what you receive, mm, you know, from mm, that, you mm. um, then it's very rewarding. Yes, it is. It really is. Yes. Yeah, and it is. That's the, that's the major part of the journey. Is to, and the, mm. I think the f- whole uh, third or fourth episode, I, I talk all about just have de- giving yourself time in a sacred mm. or a gentle space mm. to develop the trust mm. and not throwing yourself to the lions. Mm. <laughs> you don't do it. Which I was a little bit <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I've got, you know, I've got this thing and I want to help people and then it's like, yeah. hold your horses. <laughs> I, I was like that about yoga. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I couldn't yeah. stop talking about yes. yoga and, and, you know, because it had, Made me so happy and relaxed. Yes, yeah. I, I wanted everybody to feel that. Of course, and that's the whole thing, isn't it? It's like as soon as you do these things or meditating, mm. I, I don't even know how people live without meditating, but you just want people to <laughs> get the bennies. But people aren't ready for it until they're no. ready for it. Yeah, no. And that's the other part you have to. Did mm. you ever have that where you, because I know it's a, a, something that I've done I don't even want to call it a mistake, but an experiment that wasn't that successful where, um, yeah, just in in trying to encourage somebody or maybe giving a message or doing something that you got a lot of pushback or even angry responses or resistance. Oh, yes, yeah. because um, that would be with my immediate family. Right. And, and not my own children probably, mm, mm. my own children, mm. Um who were not ready to hear this, mm, you know, mm. and I could see that the potential was there. Yes. And, and it, yes, it has shown up over the years. They have got those abilities. Yes. Um, but if they they just choose to shut down sometimes and, yeah. and you can't change that. You just then, have to respect yes, it, don't you? Yeah. 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 Yes. But people get afraid and they, they think mm. that's why they have such a, even as you said, that you were um afraid when you first went to the church or whatever yes. and because it was yeah. unknown and, and I talk a lot about that yeah. how our, our nervous system wants to keep us in the known mm. and this is all about going into the unknown yes. so there can be a lot of st- anxiety and fear comes oh, up yes. as you're when you're opening yeah. up yeah I think um my fear about um the development circle was um I didn't want to um uh, have anybody possess me? Oh, you're you know, afraid of that. Yeah. Yes, that mm, sort of mm, feeling, mm, mm. and uh, and that I wouldn't be in charge. I, but the whole thing is, yeah, you are in charge. You are in charge. You yeah, know, that's right. So, yeah. and everything else is sort of an illusion. Yes, I think. yes. But before you get that sense, if you if it's feeling like you're not, you have to overcome that illusion and come mm-hmm. to that. Mm. That knowingness that you are in charge yes. and that you have the the, the power yes. is within you, yeah. even though it feels like you're dealing with these yeah. other powers. Yeah, um, yeah, that's cool. So, um, so what would you say from your? Because now, so now you've been doing readings, um, and you you've been working and doing this for oh, God, about, well, it's like uh, thirty six years. Thirty six so. years. Yes. So. For those who are either maybe just starting to open up mm. or wanting to or have an ability and want to turn it into a business or have um, just whatever, what what's your sort of best advice? Well, I think 
meditation mm. first, mm. practice your meditation. Mm. Um, it's good to be with a group mm. of like-minded people mm. um, and choose your group carefully. Yes. Um, whether it's within the church or whether it's within um, just a, a group of people that are getting together. Yeah. Um, there's always... Um, Ego, because the pers- that's play. right. The personalities yes. can really make yeah. it. That, yeah. and I do feel that when you've got a group of people opening up and they're running energy, mm. that a lot of that ego stuff starts to flare up, and it it's does. part of the journey to clear it, it out. Yes. But if and you you're kind of in the group to do that, mm. but at the same time you can get hurt in that process yes. if there's. If there aren't good processes in in, yes. in in place, well, one of the first things that you would learn in a, a good development circle is how to put your protection around you mm, mm. and just work with your guides and mm. ask them to mm. um, keep you protected mm. and you keep yourself protected. Mm. Um, I haven't had any real problems. Mm. There have been times when I have gone with someone to. Um, uh, clear a, a negative spirit from mm. the home, mm. and I was afraid before I went in there. Mm. So, so being afraid before you go in and do something like that is not good. You should mm. not even go in there. You shouldn't go in, right? And I, so I was um, actually attacked at the oh, solar plexus. Okay, mm-hmm. but the lady that was with me was very uh, knowledgeable, and mm. she she just made everything right you know right, she was right, good right. confidence yes. so it's confidence confidence yes and and um, that's part of what i mean about yeah. the the illusion too because my the circle we we talk work a lot from this idea that at the end of the day everything is my creation mm-hmm. so that's right. even if it is a negative energy yeah. that is a projection from me and i, yeah. I do have that ultimate power a lot yes. easier yeah. said than done because yeah. we play out our our illusions both then in the physical world Mm -hmm. with people but then it can also start to go into the the metaphysical world that something has more power than you and and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just um, time and um, trust. Trust. Yeah. Yeah. That's the message that continually came to me. Yeah. Trust. 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 Yeah. So. Trust. Trust this thing that is when the whole world is like, well, prove it to me. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yeah. So anything else that you would like to uh, um, share? At the moment I can't. Re- oh, well, just that as a child, mm. I was um, speaking to you about this earlier, mm. that uh, the moments of absolute exhilaration and joy mm. that would come over me mm. and I don't think, well, what is that? Because I was all on my own and just right. walking or whatever. Right. And the feeling of knowing mm. of that we w- always had existed and we always will. Right. And those right. sort of feelings and, and I was very lucky to have a, a father that would talk to me about those things. Yes, because Granddad was mm-hmm. definitely more of the philosophical. Yes, he yes. was wonderful to talk to. Yeah. And uh, so he, I was not ever discouraged from doing what I'm doing right. by my parents. That's wonderful, yeah, mm. yeah. And so if you are a parent <laughs> out there <laughs> with a little, because so many, we've got, I mean, Lynn is, I, you know, as I said, you're, those spiritualist groups were very like the first wave of the new age, oh, basically. Yes, yeah. And now we've got, you know, people are yeah, everywhere, everywhere, just crystal and, hugging it, yes, and chakra shaking. Yes. And it was easy, but it, you were like, for, you know, first. It, it uh, was really where you would go to learn those things. Yeah. But of course, now we've got so many more opportunities yeah. and different groups. And mm. um, it's just a matter of finding where. Your group is, yes. you know. And what do you think is your strength? Because I often talk that it's a little bit like playing instruments. Like you can play a little bit of fiddle, but you might be really great on the trombone. Like oh. like card readings. Like you also do the spirit paintings as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I've done lots of that. That just happened mm. because I was I love drawing faces. Yes. And um, 
and then it just developed. And from you just that. start drawing. And, and people recognize when, so yes, what yes. a spirit painting is, yeah. Lynn. Are you in a trancey state when you're doing that, or are you just doing uh, it? No, it you're in happen? a very trusting state. In a trusting state, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you, you know, it's just because that's got to be because someone, because people actually commission you to do those, mm, right? Mm. So they just say, I want a, a painting of my aunt somebody rather or wife or husband no no what, what, they, how, they, what they want this usually would want a, a, their spirit guide drawn oh they want the spirit yeah guide drawn. or, or okay. the energy okay. of that guide okay. that would be I with see. them and why they would be there right. and, um, you know so the that would develop into a um a portrait right um, of the guide as he was at one time on earth right I see. Um, okay. or, and um what he's come to help you with right and do you and get so, messages as you're painting that with it as um, well or you just as, yes it's i do but mm. it's usually at the end yes and and when you're still really in touch and then mm. you can convey that yes but um and they're there to support and help you in yes. certain areas of life so um and the colors that come on onto the um painting yes uh would be significant with your yes. chakras and right everything. and just the, the frequencies mm-hmm. and i've had mm. the circle talk a lot about that um you know things any creation and i talk about it even with this show even though we're just talking there's there's other frequencies that are going into these recordings mm, and that mm. that you might be hearing our words but mm. the other frequencies might also be activating mm. abilities to start or to center mm. or whatever mm. and that so the so and I know when I've done paintings um and they've the circle have been talking about this that any music anything that you create is now holding your kind of integrated mm. frequencies mm. and that people, as they're becoming more energetically sensitive, are becoming will become more attracted to the frequencies and things, yes. as well as, yes. or they already are, but it'll be even more visceral. Like the that I want that song or the the painting mm-hmm. because the, or that TV show or anything, mm. because there's also these frequencies Absolutely. in it, and that's kind of the new. <laughs> yeah. the, the new value. Yeah, and I had done a little. I had I had an idea of doing these. Um, yeah, like energy charged paintings for my yes. friends. So I do a painting and yeah. then kind of charge them. And I really only did one. Yeah. And I gave it to when I left New York, uh, Everett, my brother, and Lucy, his wife, took it mm. for their place. And it's kind of a corny thing. It's like a heart with some rainbow colors yeah, coming out of lovely. it. It's not like, yeah. it's like, you know. Um, but their little sons really pick up on yes. these paintings. Yeah. And, uh, my brother doesn't really believe in this stuff, but he did send me a video <laughs> of Atlas holding the painting and he said, how, you know, how does this make you feel? And he's like, makes me feel happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then um, my, another time Lucy was listening to what, what, what an early recording of the podcast and she sent me a video of their other son just fixated on the painting <gasps> special isn't that crazy mm, i mean yeah. i st- it still blows me away all this oh, stuff i yes. think it's so cool so i think all that you've yeah. been doing this for uh, years. yeah like, uh, it has been very rewarding yeah and um loving it mm. um and so, people look at their paintings and kind of meditate with them and they can yeah, yeah. some people say oh the paintings the eyes move or, right. or the expression changes yes and that has happened yes but it, right. but it's it's because they're in a particular state yes and they're, they're connecting it. with yes. that they're probably connecting with the frequencies mm-hmm. and they're seeing yeah. yes the, yeah. the, the frequency so, embodiment yeah. yeah so it can become serious or happy yeah oh i'm getting my truth pimples <laughs> <laughs> so yes a lot of uh, times people have mentioned that yes and some people have been very frightened of it because right. they've hooked into it and then they they haven't they're not really ready. no they're not, they're not ready they didn't really understand what was <laughs> what is, what the entire message of the yeah. spirit painting was going to be <laughs> not just a wall hanging <laughs> yes yeah, so i've had lots of experiences um like that and um most of my readings are it's a bit of a mixture with uh, clear audience. Yes, which is I the have hearing. a lot of mm-hmm. clear audience, mm. um, and the um, clairvoyance sort mm. of thing. It, it, not so much, right? But right. Um, I hear a lot, mm, so mm. and I feel. Yes, I'm a f- 
I feel, feel it. Yes, I feel yeah. it in my body. And, yeah. And so, do you feel and, and the emotions too? Or uh, I do, but then um, sometimes I have to just ask them to hold that back a bit. Hold it back a because, bit because yeah. um, it's pointless trying to do something if you're feeling so. T- uh, yes. As though you're going to cry, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Welcome and, to and the reading. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, yes, um, you learn how to just tell them what's going on. Right. You know, without, yeah, without too much emotion. You just need a little bit. But to... it does take energy. Yes. And um, at the end of the day you feel really happy for doing the work. It's beautiful mm. when, when you really mm. touch people and... Particularly, I think for mediumship, there is when someone gets a message that's very or validated, mm. um, and yeah. it's it's so profound for them yeah. uh, to to feel mm. that and the, the yeah. sense of well being that can come. Even though, as we were talking a little bit earlier, it's not about them those people then becoming dependent on that spirit no, connection no. all the time, but mm. just. Because it's about then making their own connection yes. or, or finding that way. Yes, that's right. Really just validating that it's there and, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, any other any other favourites? Well, there have been so many that I couldn't really you can't, pick yeah. um, any in particular. I, I forget information. Yes. Of when, it's, when it's been given, uh, there's only a few times that I really remember things. Oh, there's things that have happened with... Um, the paintings that I do for mm. personally, mm. I, I have been shown um, places that I didn't even know that uh, they were there, and um, so so you've done a painting of a place and then yeah, found yeah, the, re- the yeah. quote unquote real location. Yes. Oh, um, we I did a painting of a goddess, mm. um, and it was the um, uh, to the Diana, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and there was a big lake, mm. and I was told it was Diana's mirror. Mm. Now, I didn't know anything about Diana's mirror or where it was mm. or mm. anything like that, mm. and um, I found out, yes, there was mm. a Diana's mirror in Italy. Oh. And um, and so we did go to the place, and I, and I was told about a past life that mm. I had been in that particular. I was a priestess oh, in there. Oh, cool. Um, that was one of a life mm, I had. Not mm. a happy life, yes, but it was yeah. important. There weren't always a nice full of laughs being a priestess. <laughs> no, it was not happy. Yeah. But, but um, yes, so we did actually go there mm, and see the ruins mm. of that temple. Did you get the vibey vibes when you were there? Oh, we didn't get close enough, but it was really, I felt it was a bit of a completion. Yeah. Because... Um, that was a time when I was together with my my husband who mm. now. Mm. Um, he and- recovered from the broken back, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, 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 he's all right. He's yeah. a good, strong man. Yeah. And um, so we we did um, visit that place together mm. because we'd had an unhappy existence there before uh, with to do with that. Oh. You were you and your husband mm-hmm. ah, yes. in that past life, yes. in that naughty high priestess. Yes, <laughs> yes. I was a naughty high priestess. We were a naughty high priestess. But they soon fixed me right up <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> for that. Damn. And with him, you were being bad with him no, or naughty? Yes, yes. So you yes. had a what, high priestess yeah, affair at yeah. Diana's Mirror? Yes, and that was a no-no. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Everyone had to be virgins there. Oh, man. And so you, <laughs> so <laughs> this is great. So you so, were an Uncle Mick. Yeah. At at, it's like a soap opera. It's like yeah. cosmic soap opera. You yeah. and Uncle Mick at that at, at temple yeah. had an affair. Yes, and we were broke, found. You were found, we were discovered. Found. He could just walk away. Of course, being and, a man, yeah. Um, Oopsie but, daisy. but not for me. Why? Right. What I happened? I unhappy and they walled me up alive. <gasps> Whoa. Did, so did you, when this past life memory or whatever came to your vision, did you, were you... Like how was oh, it? Were well, you a painting that you got all this information yes, from this past life yes, thing? Yeah, and you got and did you I, feel being being walled up? No, did you, no, uh, no. It was like watching a movie, right? And um, I just saw it all. Yeah, and uh, but it when we did go there on the way there, and I saw the hills. Yeah, around Rome. Yeah, and 
and I felt very emotional yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, but and then to see it, and then I was told by my guides mm. that this time our lives were to be happy. Oh, happy oh, ending. Happy <laughs> ending. <And> did that? <laughs> did, <laughs> so every <to> way. <laughs> so <Boom>. to speak. <laughs> happy ending. Woo-hoo. So. Did you find that after going to that place that there was some kind of shift in in your relationship with Uncle Mick? Did you feel yes. a bit better about making love or anything yes. like that? Um, well, yes. You know, it's like, you know that saying, um, you find fulfilment. You chop water, carry wood, isn't it? Chop. Chop wood, carry water. Right, right. Then after fulfilment, chop wood, carry water. <laughs> so right. it, it doesn't you make it going. perfect. No, no, no. But it, but it it completed something. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's subtle, but yes, it, but yes. I knew I had to see the place, and yeah, it was yes. a very beautiful place. Too. Yes, yes, yes. That's so great. I know because when I've talked to Auntie Lynn about my just after my dad passing and after going through the first wave of the grief, feeling mm. that a connection level mm. within myself, mm. a, a strength or something coming mm. that was like almost like it was like some, something's healed and it heals in your psyche mm. as well as mm. And then that, and then you start living from that place yes. instead of yeah. um, from the old, the old yes. place kind yes. of thing. And that's how all this kind of energy, when you might visit a place, have a, 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 there's a little bit of a soul retrieval for yes. that that part of the, yes. that was trapped in that wall. Maybe yes. you, you started doing that. Yes. Thing. Oh, I got the truth pimples. That yes. means this is what happened. Well, that's good. <laughs> I get the because, truth pimples. Yeah. yeah so yeah. the the part of Lynn's soul that was trapped yes. in that wall reached out to her now yeah. to show her the place to come in yeah. and, and reconnect and reclaim yes. that that part of yourself. Yes. Yeah. And yes. I can't make up the truth pimples. So. <laughs> no, the truth pimples are there, all right. Yeah, yeah. And, yes, uh, and you're right about that because, um, yes, speaking about feeling hemmed in, mm, boxed in, mm, going beyond that right. was a little bit uh, in – other areas in your yes, life. Yes, yes, the metaphor um, of it. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, you know, yeah. So you sort of hold yourself back. Right. Yeah, so and, and, and nothing really is holding me back now. So no. it's like. Um, when you, yeah. What year was that that you had that? That was um, two, oh, 2014. So, oh, so that's so, yeah, that's very curious to me. Okay, no, because I'm just trying to think the first year that I came back to Australia and I think you were living in Warragul, I'm not sure, but it was yeah. the first time I knew that you were actually doing readings mm-hmm. and you had like a, like a, we're sitting in uh, Lynn's reading room now and crystals and you know, angel cards and everything. I mm-hmm. really didn't know this about you. Yes. and um, But I can't remember what that was. It was probably, I, I don't know when it was, but... Um, I think it was after I had my event, after 2004. I'm not sure. You're in Warragul. Yes. But um, yeah. Just that, that that whole coming out. But obviously this uh, this piece of uh, that was feeling hemmed in, that completion happened, mm. that was in mm. 2014. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was our, uh, that year was our 50th anniversary. Mm. And it, it was an important, a beautiful experience lovely trip to mm. Italy and that was part of it yes so that painting had been painted um, a couple of years before that oh mm. oh I love it I yeah. love that so this is the <laughs> stuff I love about this it's just all, when you kind of allow yourself to open up and start experiencing there is this other whole dimension to life and mm. this texture and when you get a, a confirmation of oh I received this yeah this thing and then there was this visceral reality of this yeah. place, and you got to visit it. Well, that's I just happened think to me great. a couple of times. It has, wow! Yes. And um, to do with a, a lifetime in um, France as mm, well. Mm. And uh, it, it wasn't set out. I didn't set out to go and explore a past life or anything. No. As I was meditating or yeah. painting, it yeah. just 
happened. It just happens, yeah. It yeah, just comes down because they think, oh, we should need to do know this now. It's time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, so that's how it happens. Well, that was some of my very first quote-unquote spiritual experiences. I mean, I'd be meditating and I'm reading palms and interested in mm. astrology, but not that I had these past life regressions. Um, I went to just hypnotherapy for for because I could get it for free and I started going into these very spontaneous past life regressions, mm. deaths. Yes. Yeah, and then mm. got through to the uh, the other side um, in one of them, like a six weeks. I did like six sessions yeah. and saw that. But they were very... Um, Quite a few of those were just like I physically went. I was when I fell through an ice hole, and I was Ooh. like a little less Inuit kid and mm. just sh- freezing. I was, you know, shaking and freezing, mm. and then and then I died, and it all released oh. and stuff like that. <laughs> so, but they were like, they were some of the first experiences. But that's yes. that we are, we're living here as the people that we are, mm. and part of I I believe this journey. That, and particularly in the, this shift of consciousness is that we're reclaiming all these parts of yes. ourselves that have got yeah. disenfranchised. And because yeah. I sort of say the whole idea of enlightenment or ascension or whatever you want to call it, this sort of upgrade in consciousness, mm. is that it's all got to come with you. You can't leave any mm. part behind. Mm. So we often have to face our shadow and yes. recollect bits and pieces yes. and process traumas from past lives and things like that to just mm. come back into the real wholeness and mm. keep moving forward mm. or keep go to the next level of consciousness mm. yeah. yeah oh that's awesome that's oh, really good well i think we might wrap it up but thank you so much for coming on this mm. was actually just worked out really beautifully that we could be here together on this this day and that i um could bring my podcast ge- gear out to the country to trafalgar mm. shout out to trafalgar <laughs> Lynn, Auntie Lynn, what is your Instagram where people can see your paintings? Oh, how do you spell it? I it, know it's, it's like it's um just Lynn Hall, yeah. L Y W N E, yeah, Hall. And uh, you've got some underscores artist. in there, right? That's all it is. Oh, Lynn Hall artist. Mm. Yes. So have a look at Lynn's paintings out there, and you're just starting to do. A few readings again, maybe yes, you took a little sab- sabbatical yes, yes. or rest. I've had a little rest. Yes. And, uh, I thought I might do some. Yeah, mm. so you, people could always reach out and do a little mm. uh, message you or something, check yes, in with you if yes. they want to do. She's mm. wonderfully, you're just a very, you've just been doing this work for a long time and you obviously just have such a clear connection and clear channel when you when you have that connection it's very it's just right there for you it's beautiful it is, it yeah is. yeah oh well, thank you so much for having yeah me. beautiful mm. yay lynn so thanks everybody for joining us and uh i'll be going to a few other special spots here on my australian tour connecting with uh people of interest in my life and in the journey of uh coming out of the cosmic closet we'll see you soon <laughs> coming up on the next episode of coming out of the cosmic closet Probably of all my family members, I think you're the the one who's most interested in this work. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I've watched George's journey for a long, long time mm. on this pathway, and it's it's been interesting and scary as mm. her aunt watching her. Um, <laughs> Why but... so? I think you're a really interesting case because you are. Uh, you're an English guy. You're from the north, like northern yeah, England, which yeah. is like coal mining. Yeah, I managed to run out of there about 20 years ago now to yeah, Australia. Yeah, and that's a really like hard, hard, hard very, English, very hard. You know, but listen. Did you have invisible friends? Because now I realise my invisible friends. I was probably c- c- communicating. I would have had an imaginary friend that I probably got my head kicked in in Halifax. Is that right? And so you yeah. would not, even if I did, I would have hit it. You would yeah. have hit it. So you so would have I, shut I, that I, shit I, down yeah, straight exactly. away. So they could have been all still there waiting <laughs> yeah. for me to play with them. Yeah, it was yeah. like, this is not going to happen. You know, that, <laughs> Go in the mud and the rain. That's please. right. Yeah, that's you know, right. be a man. Be a hard like, bastard. Yeah. yeah. There's your canary going down the mine. <laughs> you know, it, 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 was, it was that kind of yeah, a yeah, way. You know? So if I'd have said, hey, guess what? Ben's with me right now. Fuck, you know, He's wearing a dress. And I'd have still been great. locked up somewhere. You know? <laughs> it, 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 it wouldn't have happened.